Assalamualaikum ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to discuss about tolerance. Tolerance is a right or an obligation that we owe to every human being. The grand scheme of the Almighty is that He has given us the, the wisdom, the free will to say whatever we want to say, to express whatever we would like to express as long as we don't hurt other people. He has given us this inalienable right to form an opinion, to have a worldview, to adopt a religion, to adopt any culture. So therefore, we need to understand that it is the scheme of the Almighty that human beings remain tolerant to one another. Tolerance must not be taken as a weakness. No, it's not a weakness. It is the expression of the fact that every person has a right to form an opinion. Every person can express an opinion. No one has the authority to impose his or her opinion on the other person. The, the, the first thing that we need to understand here is that the starting point of tolerance is perhaps the family itself and I dare say the spouses themselves. If they exhibit this tolerance, this empathy and the fact that they do not impose themselves on each other, this is how the culture of tolerance starts at the very base of a society. The building block of a society is the family indeed. And if the, if the spouses are tolerant towards one another, they do not impose their opinions upon one another, and then at the same time do not impose their opinions on their adult children, they do understand that as far as their adult children are concerned, they are equal human beings, and they have to show tolerance by not imposing their own worldview, their own culture, and their own views on their children, especially when they are grown up. Of course, when they are growing up, you have all the right to educate them. But once children are grown up, you have to show this tolerance that whatever view your child settles with ultimately, you have to accept it. Of course, you can debate with him or her, but you have to show this tolerance that the, that person has the right to form an opinion. And then we need to understand that this culture of tolerance actually needs to be expanded even more. And the best way that we can see it is amongst these political polarizations that today continue to plague our societies and make them go to extremes. And the best way to do this is that if we are, the, we are a follower of a political party, we need to understand and we need to always realize the good points of the leader of the political party that we are not supporting and perhaps the shortcomings of the leader of the party that we are supporting. We need to understand that people are not angels and we must form an opinion according to our own conscience. We, know, we need not be diehard supporters because we need to understand that this tolerance will always exist when we acknowledge that other people are human beings. They have good points and they have bad points. Our own people, our own leaders that we follow, they are good, have good points and bad points. And similar is the case with our opposing leaders. We need to develop this culture amongst ourselves to express appreciation of the opposite leader and criticism of our own leader. And finally, dear viewers, this culture of uh, tolerance produces critical thinking. It encourages critical thinking and critical thinking is the base, is the fundamental ladder through which any country can make advancements in science, in culture, in thought itself. So critical thinking is the product of this tolerant culture. So let us all come together, become tolerant of each other, think more of our own selves, criticize more of our own selves and let the other person live. So it's like saying live and let live. We have to, to follow this thing because we need to understand that this actually is a scheme on which the Almighty has created this, this universe. Thank you.